If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map for some impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Grasslands 22. But before that, this video is brought to you by CBW Farms LLC and Joe Six Pack American. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Grasslands 22 map, you can find over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the one point of release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Grasslands. This map is based in the UK. There is a new wind effect, custom lighting and color grading, animated objects across the map, custom textures, PBR with parallax mapping, Custom Traffic HD New Models by Oxygen David. 79 Fields with Missions, Small, Medium, and Large. Seasons Visual with Random Events, Trees, Hedges, etc. This map does have the Elm Creek Collectibles. Highly Customizable UK License Plates built into the map. Custom Foliage and Ground Textures. Custom Sounds, Precision Farming Support, Mud Mod Support, New Fruit in Linseed, Field Beans, Rye, and Alfalfa and a new cloud texture. And lastly, the map author wishes us to, well, hope you all like the map. This map has no required mods, but we are gonna be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. In addition, if you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, You'll find that the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farm mode. In addition, you do have starting machinery in all game modes. The only exception, of course, is that in new farmer and start from scratch, you do not own any land and your bank balances are different. Now, with respect to low end systems and this map with respect to performance, I ran this map in my test system, which has integrated AMD graphics, and I was able to obtain a full and firm 60 fps regardless of where i was looking using my low end graphic settings so you should have no issue whatsoever in running this map on pretty much anything that is going to meet within the minimum requirements of farming simulator 22. now let's go ahead and take a look at that pda go ahead and take a look at our lands overview you see, we started by owning farmland ID2. That is the main starting farm. You can buy that for $209,544 in any alternate game mode. Something else that I want to point out is farmland ID1, which is going to basically be what I would typically call the unbuyable parts, which is going to be the road network, the areas where there are stores, etc. Well, that can be bought for $0. And I do want to point that out because if you buy that particular farmland, well, what you're going to notice is that there is a pig area and a horse area that is actually on farmland ID 1. In addition to those two areas, we also have chickens at farmland ID 33. You can buy that for $309,000. There is a biogas plant at farmland ID 15 that can be bought for $46,000. And lastly, there are sheep at farmland ID 24. Viable for $215,904. With respect to our crops, we do have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22 available on this map. In addition, we also have, as I mentioned earlier, linseed, rye, field bean, and alfalfa. Lastly, if you do have the premium expansion installed, you will have access to your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We can now go and compare that to our field calculator screen, and this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And we can see most of our fields are going to range in size from 2 to 5 hectares. We do have a few that are larger than that, though. Take a look at our crop calendar. We do have a custom growth calendar on this map. 
And you can see we have our growth schedules for linseed, rye, field bean, and alfalfa. With respect to our prices screen, we do have the ability to sell most, but sadly not all of the crops that are available to us on this map. We do not have a sell point for olives by default. If by any chance you wish to actually do olives on this map, you will need to put down your own sell point. But all the other basing crops are available. With respect to our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, we are good to go there, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Now, with respect to our base game production items, we do have the ability to sell most of our base game production items. And oddly enough, if we manage to make olive oil, we can sell that. But at any rate, what we can't sell, interesting enough, are planks. And we have a sawmill on this map. So while your sawmill is going to produce planks, well, you're not going to be able to sell those. You're going to have to put down a carpentry shop to convert those planks into furniture to sell that or put your own sell point down for your planks. This map does not have the ability to buy bulk lime, nor does it have the ability to sell your stones. So if you do play with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone sell point. As you can see, we have a sell point for linseed, two sell points to be exact. We do not have any sell points for rye as an additional crop. Kind of odd that we would have an additional crop added without an actual sell point for that crop. We do have field bean and we have alfalfa and alfalfa hay. Now, I do want to point out the two icons here for alfalfa and alfalfa hay. I do like this icon. It kind of goes back in line with some of our hay straw and grass icons a little bit with basically the heap and then the alfalfa flower in the middle. With respect to our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of our washed root crops. Root crops. With respect to our platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items, but we do have the ability to sell our premium expansion production items, as well as our separated manure, if we are playing with pumps and hoses, and those playing with straw harvest, we will have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets as well. As far as our starting vehicles, it is all owned. None of it is leased and is all very well maintained. We have the pig area because we went ahead and bought farmland ID1. We have our chicken farm. We have cows at the main farm and the horse barn. That again is at farmland ID1. And I did buy that farmland so we could have those icons pop. We do have custom contracts on this map, and we do start up by owning the dairy. There are actually three productions on this map, the dairy, the BGA, and the sawmill. We do also have those 100 Elm Creek collectibles, and you're gonna find that scattered around on the map, these collectibles are gonna appear in bunches. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the New Holland T6125 small tractor. We then move up to the T7 275 HD medium New Holland tractor. And we round it out with a large Case IH Magnum 340 CVX drive. We have a Gloss Tryon 720 harvester, and that is going to be able to harvest our linseed, our beans, and our rye. And to match that up, we're going to have our rain header, and that's going to work with our new crops of rye, linseed, and field bean. We have the Lumpkin Samgar 9500K Cultivator, the ES Pro 600RC Cedar. We have the Amazon ZATS 3200 Fertilize Spreader that is going to attach with a three-point hitch. For our mowers, we have the Novacat A10 Crossflow Rear Mower and the Novacat 301 AMED Pro Front Mower. We have the Ponger HIT 1618T Tether. We have the Merge Max 950 Wind Rower. We have the Pottinger Impress 185 BC Pro Round Baler and Wrapper combination. We have the Hauer XB 150 Front Loader Arms. For those Front Loader Arms, we have a Pallet Fork, Universal Bucket, and Bell Spike. We have our Header Trailer for our Rain Header. And we wrap it up with a 1,000 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. 
Now, as far as our farm tour goes, well, we're going to start by running across the street. Because that is where we're going to find our farmhouse. So we do have a sleep trigger here at the farmhouse. We'll look both ways before crossing the street. Although I'm not really sure if we have traffic that actually runs down this lane. And then we have our main farm. With respect to the farms being customizable on this map, it's a UK map. Pretty much, we can assure you, uh, no. There's not a whole lot of customization going on. You can sell these silage bunkers, but that's going to be about it. The town's not going to let you do diddly squat with respect to customizing this farm. So, like I said, we do have our two three-sided silage bunkers. We can buy our chickens located right here. We're going to be able to hold 50 chickens in this, well, basically free-roaming chicken coop. We have our food trough for our chickens and our egg spawn point. Our farm silo is going to be located inside of this shed here. So we have our dump and fill point. Although I do have to say, I'm not really seeing our fill pipe. But okay. Oh, looky here. Your freebie. Your freebie for the tour. Um, did I mention that these often appear in bunches? Pretty sure I did. Here we have our cow pasture, so we have our food trough. We have our cow delivery point. Where we're going to be able to hold 50 cattle. We have our milk output trigger located right here. Coming around the back, we do have our slurry point for our cows. We have a maintenance trigger. Now we do not have any sort of indicators as to where that trigger is located. But it's going to basically be located right here along the side and part of this service ramp. We've got a fuel tanker located right there. Some more of our machinery. And that is pretty much the starting farm tour. Now, as far as our other two farms, the sheep and chicken, I'm over here at the chicken area, which includes field 17. Way off in the distance, about center to the screen, we have our starting farm location. And up here on the hillside, we do have our, we'll call it the secondary farm, our chicken farm. You see here it is pretty much on a hillside. We have our egg spawn point. We have our free range chicken food trough. And we're going to be able to store another 50 chickens in here. And then the rest of this farm is basically just going to be some structural storage buildings. And that is the chicken farm. Now we're going to fly straight across the map at this point. Because on the other side of the hill over here, we have the sheep area. And as we're moving across, we have our BGA, which we're going to come to here in a little bit. We can see our main starting farm, which is located right over there. And you will see this map 
does have what you would expect with respect to a UK map, with respect to hedges everywhere. These hedges do not have collisions. You should be able to put your vehicles through those. Now, what I did not test is to see if these collisions are set up with respect to bales to halt bales from basically going through the hedges or not. Sometimes you can set up a collision that only stops bales and, well, has a side effect, header trailers. Here we have our sheep farm. We have our main starting farm down there. We're going to come in. Again, we once again have a bunch of decorative buildings. We have our spawn point for our wool. And then through this gate, we're going to come to our sheep delivery point, where we're going to be able to have 200 sheep. And then on the other side of that, well, we're going to have our triggers for our food and water. With respect to this farm, nope. Can't sell a darn bit of it other than the animal triggers. So we can sell the animal triggers if we want. And then we just basically have these buildings all by themselves and this grass pasture. Same holds with respect to the chicken farm. Now the main farm, I tried, but I wasn't able to sell the animal triggers there. So I'm not really sure what is going on with respect to that. Now let's loop around and make our way over here to the pig area. We do have, have a little bit of a forest area up here. A little bit of a lake. Now there is at least one field down in the flat just to the east of our starting farm that has some utility lines and some utility poles running through it. Those utility poles do have collisions something else interesting that i saw is this field where are we at field 43 for whatever reason has this this barren patch this is an ai field and you would expect the ai to fully plant the entirety of the field and given the fact that this patch is bare i gotta wonder if quite possibly maybe there is a little bit missing with respect to the field definition. And it, the fact that it's here kind of in the middle of the field really does kind of seem a little bit counter to that. But I'm not really sure what's going on with respect to this patch, but in all the times that I've loaded this map up so far, I have seen that patch present. Here we have the pig farm. Again, this is tied to farmland ID 1 that we can buy for $0.00. So we can pick up our pigs. 100 pigs are available here. We have our food trough. We have our water trough. And that is pretty much it. If you want to collect slurry from these guys, well, you're going to have to put down your own slurry point. Got a couple sheds. And that is also about it. Now we're going to bypass the vehicle shop, which is over in that general direction because I'm gonna go up here to where our horses are and that will basically conclude the farm tours. Yeah, I found that earlier too. Just saying, maybe in an update that'll come out. There were a few other oddities, just a few other little spots on fields where I didn't see um, crop growing but that biggest spot over there on field 43 was the most pronounced. So here we have our horse farm. Hmm, blue. This horse farm is blue, apparently. And we have our horse building built on a slant. We can put eight horses inside of here. And we have our food trough where we would expect it because this is a base game horse pasture and we can sell this in its entirety but again these buildings are permanent 
with respect to our scoring metrics. We're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we do have three productions built into the map. As I mentioned earlier, a dairy, a BGA, and a sawmill. Here we are at our vehicle shop. And inside the vehicle shop, we're going to find our trigger. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. We'll just see where things spawn. Hmm. So we got a pretty decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn in at, given the fact that this is a UK map. And I would say our fields are more small to medium as opposed to small, medium, and large. I mean, maybe field one up there is going to start to broach into the large segment. Now, something that is not here, at least not something that I could find, is the actual dealer trigger that would be able to allow you to sell repaint and customize your vehicles whereas the farm dealer farm workshop trigger it is going to be a little bit more limiting with respect to what you can do here we have our sawmill so we have our wood dump point our wood cell trigger and man oh man talk about talk about wooden stuff it is all over here we have our dump point. We have our interactive point. We have our pallet spawn point for our planks, which again, we can't sell. And we have our wood chip spawn point. And we're gonna make our way back up to where the chicken farm is located up on the hill, because that's where we're gonna find our animal dealer. With respect to the ability to sell all of our basing, props, production items, and animal outputs. But we are going to be giving the map a score of 0.75. Because we do not have the ability to sell olives. We also do not have the ability to sell planks. But we do have the ability to sell everything else. Meanwhile, we do not have bulk, lime, or stone. But we're not going to actually deduct off any points for that. Nor are we going to deduct off points because we don't appear to have any way of selling the custom crop in rye. So right beside our chicken farm, here we have our animal dealer. So we have our loading chute, and we're going to have to actually go to the loading chute in order to do that. And then we have our bale sell point. We do have quite a bit with respect to elevation changes on our fields. So you may want to have a little bit of overpowered machinery or overpowered tractors to pull your machinery and your implements up these inclines. With respect to farms being customizable, we're giving the map 0.25. We can sell a few and select things. They are few and far between, but we are going to give the map a little bit of a point there. Not too terrible much, but this is fairly typical for UK maps in general in that everything is baked in with very, very little customization options. We have our dairy, so we have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point and around the side or what would be around the front. We have our interactive icon. We do have two Three-sided silage bunkers here at our BGA. And here we have the biogas plant itself. Now we will need to buy the land in order to have access to the BGA. Now that we've done that, we have our icons here. And let's just go ahead and see what happens when we try to sell it. It does go away. And it appears we can indeed sell these light poles and we can sell these hawkers also up here we're going to find another fail cell point point. 
And I have to say, that is just about it here with respect to this map. Now, as far as our final scoring metrics, buddies wear properly are using the new texturing technique. Well, we have a mix of buildings that are and are not using this new texturing technique. A lot of the buildings at the various farmyards areas, well, they are not. And then we do have a few select buildings otherwhere on the map where they are. So we're going to give the map a score of 0.5 is a half of a point with respect to buildings and textures using the new texturing technique. I know there was call out in the description about using it, but uh, it's not used extensively. At least as best as I can tell. The shed? Yes. This farmhouse, maybe not so much, but we do have the new windows, so it gets a little bit of a pass. Then lastly, trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. We're going to go with 0.75 there as well, because, well, over here at our maintenance shop, it would have been nice to have seen markers indicating where this was located. And while we typically don't take points off, and we're not really taking points off for this with respect to our vehicle shop, it would have been nice to have a dealer trigger. That way it would have allowed players to be able to repaint your vehicles. I believe that is one of the things that is restricted with respect to the vehicle workshop versus the actual dealer shop itself. Now, before we wrap things up, let's, 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 let's roll back a little bit because I've skipped over the soil map. Now, this map is using the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how it is being applied to these fields. And anyone that, like I said, has seen my precision farming videos where we do expose all of the soil maps, this is indeed the generic soil map and as such, Got a fair bit of silty clay and loam to the south and north with a big collection of loamy sand and sandy loam more toward the center of the map. Now, with respect to our final score, we're going to be in the map, this map score of 3.25 out of 5. It's not that bad of a score. And again, if you are a UK player or someone that likes UK maps, you're probably pretty accustomed to the fact that you're not going to be able to customize your farms anyway. So the fact that most of the things on this farm or on this map are permanently embedded really isn't that big of a deal. So if that's the case, well, the fact that it got 0.25 in that metric really isn't going to matter to you all that much. The big things that I am most concerned about is one, the seemingly inability to sell rye and it being a new crop. The inability to sell olives, even though we do have olives, as an option on the map. Now, sure, olives may not be a crop that is grown in the UK, and for realism purposes, it's not something that would have a sell point. The fact is, it's available on the map. And if it's available for someone to put olive trees down, then it should also be available to sell that product because maybe maybe realism isn't the goal for a particular player on this map now i'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below let me know your thoughts again and until next time happy farming